So if you guys haven't seen the series, this is episode three of Infiltrating the Yellow Deli Cult. And I'm wearing these secret spy glasses and they have no idea that I'm recording. Hey. And this cult is insanely homophobic. They believe if you're gay, that God should kill you. But if you have gay thoughts, then you should be punished for it. In old Israel, if a woman lay with another woman, she would be burned, you know? And so we thought it'd be perfect to bring in your fake fiance, Lydia, because you guys have seen the guy's perspective of us being at the cult, but you haven't seen the women's perspective. I don't know if you guys are scheming up back at the house right now. You guys are scheming up something, right? We got Lydia here, Ben's fake Hi. fiance. Ben told them that you've been having like gay thoughts it's, about women. And they were really not for it. Lydia messaged me back today. I guess she told me like the reason she didn't show up yesterday was kind of her whole life. She's been having lustful thoughts about women. She's never like acted on any of them or anything. I mean, we're both like saving ourselves for marriage, you know? So basically I just wanted to start with the smallest spark. Just tell him that every once in a while, my fake fiance Lydia will have the occasional gay thought. And the response I got back was not what I was expecting. Here's the thing she has. She has a conscience. We all have a conscience. It's Satan. He's trying to destroy mankind. <laughs> He just said that if you have a gay thought, your kids are gonna turn gay. I just can't believe he's saying this. To me, this just shows just how out of reality these guys are. Actually, I was friends with like a gay person yeah. when I was in the world. I couldn't really hang out with them for too long. I just couldn't handle the, like, the gayness. I just couldn't be around it. He's actually like a man. He'd probably be like really nice brother. Basically, I'm just trying to gain their trust by pretending like I also share their belief of like gay people aren't actual people. You still have to treat them like a normal person. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. maybe some of them will be safe. Is a gay person coming here and being saved? Maybe, yeah. Maybe that will happen. Yeah, you'll definitely see later how by maybe me saying something like this allows them to fully show their side that they don't actually treat gay people as if they're regular people. Don't take this wrong. There's consequences. This guy is saying that being gay is one of the worst sins you can do against God. And because of that, then God is going to have to come back at you with equal force. She could come a Friday afternoon, help some other woman in the kitchen. We're going to get Lydia with a spy watch today. She's going to be wearing the spy watch. Ben's wearing a spy watch as well. And we'll see you on the spy glasses. Rolling, I'm rolling. Where is she rolling for sure? Yeah, I'm rolling. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh wait, sorry, we have to save it. Okay, let's go. So basically this cult is so used to just blocking out everything from the outside world that when some different type of ethnicity or culture enters their group, you can just see how just completely shocked they are by it. And you say you were born in France? Do you speak French? Why do you? De Papa Chinese woman speaks French. And you can just see how much they're trying to get Lydia to like make them think that like they're going to accept her by making all these like weird Chinese remarks. Let's get Hong Kong. I'll be working in the kitchen this afternoon when I hope you wanted to help us get out of here. Yeah, I'm down. So when we joined this cult, Danny, they immediately just gave us shovels and a wheelbarrow and said, get to work. You guys are men. You guys are going to do hard manual labor. When Lydia gets here, they send her into the kitchen because they say God created women to be in the kitchen, but Lydia is not really here to gain their trust. She's more just here as a wild card. So we thought it'd be extra funny and actually kind of informative also to see what happens if a person is to disagree with them. I don't really know how to cook. Yeah, Ben usually cooks. He's really good. I don't know if I can have kids, you know, like sometimes like it scares me because like how do you get them to like, you know, like Behave? Yeah, there's another human being that you have to like control almost. Right? Like, that's hard. Well, it's an art. We actually wrote a book that says when the spanking stops, all hell broke loose. Meanwhile, while Lydia's in the kitchen, this is what we're doing. Another day at the farm, right? Pick some tomatoes. <laughs> But after some manual labor, Ben wanted to go check on his fake fiance and see how she's doing in the kitchen. How's it going, Lydia? Ben. Oh, awesome. Ben usually cooks, I don't know. That's been her choice always. She's always like, I'd rather prefer it if you cook, Ben. Spend the night next time and then she could stay longer and then we could think of her different things. I was saying maybe next week. I already told Sophie I was going to go spend the night with her. Yeah, Sophie's one of her really good friends. So Sophie's not even a real person. We thought it was funnier just to leave it up to interpretation. I think she's also uh, bisexual also. Enough of the kitchen work. We're men, so we don't belong in the kitchen, right, Danny? Yeah, back to some manual labor. So Lydia back at the kitchen. She was making a pizza. Really? 
Yeah, they're teaching how to cook. They said, uh, Lydia says that a lot of times you do the cooking, Ben. But, uh, now we're gonna teach Lydia how to cook so she can finally be the, the woman of the household, you know? <laughs> Even as men, that you don't have to worry about teaching your wife how to be a wife, you know? So how does a man know how to be a wife? Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't, yeah. I think we should just come and live here forever. What's the plan? We're gonna live here forever. Hey, we're virgins on three. One, two, three. Virgins. virgins. So the three virgins, me, Ben, and Lydia. We wanted to go check out your room, dude. Hey, no one's here. These are all my clothes. So as you guys can see, everyone sleeps together in the same room. What this means is I can't ever break character. Even when I'm sleeping, because there's someone right next to me at all times. And when you're at the house, my spy cameras run out of batteries. I still need a way to recharge them. Pretty good, dude. So after we checked out Ben's room, I had to go get my jacket from the car. And that's when we like talk strategy of what we're gonna be doing next. We sit in the circle, we should- uh, I'm on. You should sit kind of like- Yeah, yeah. Again. And then I'm gonna have a speech as well, so make sure you're recording. Oh yeah. Okay, we're on. Basically, I just wanted to recap everything I learned today that this cult taught us about Lydia. I should say, I'm also thankful for my fiance, Lydia, who decided to show up and she was in the kitchen. They taught her what it's like to be a true woman of the household and she's gonna have to be a wife. She she needs to be a good wife, you know, and just to be submissive to her husband. And I feel like she learned that a lot today. What some of the women were telling me is, I used to do a lot of the cooking because she liked it and I did the cooking, but today, they actually took her into the kitchen and taught her how to cook so she can be the woman, the true woman of the household, the women that our children deserve. I truly do think now that Lydia's place is in the kitchen. She learned how to make mayonnaise? Oh, that's even, wow, I love mayonnaise. It's my favorite condiment. Ketchup, not so much. Mustard, a little bit, but mayonnaise are the best. She also said today that she wanted to grow her hair out and she can feel like a true woman. I'm just so excited of what you guys all taught her today and I think she's gonna make an amazing life. We've given a lot of speeches in front of uh, these guys now. I'm a virgin and I'm proud of it. A hundred percent, this was the happiest I've ever seen them after a speech was given. Basically, anyone that's just not in this cult that would hear that speech would be like, wow, that's pretty offensive. Since Lydia is playing the character, character of like your outside person, we thought it would be most logical and informative if I told them that she got offended by this to see how they would react. So Lydia told me that the speech I gave last night was yeah. offensive to her. I guess she said that it was offensive that I said that she belongs in the kitchen. I think she was offended that I said because she's a woman she's supposed to be submissive to me as a man. How was it offensive? Basically, after the men hosh, she had left right after that. She went to go stay with her friend Sophie. I think she's also uh, bisexual also. I guess she just wants me to accept her for being bisexual. That doesn't make any sense. Like, how could you? But she's about to marry you. Yeah, Lydia and I, we wanted to save our first kiss for marriage. I don't understand how she's... Like, that doesn't make sense to me. That she's in the realm of, like, waiting for her first kiss. And she's Catholic and she's Christian. But she's all of a sudden bisexual and cutting her hair. I told her that you're not born gay, and then she got really offended by that. It wasn't wrong, you did that, you said that, you know? So I followed the word, you know? Sure, I'll probably gonna make it clear, and just get ready, you know what? So these guys really believe that just because Lydia had one gay thought, that she is gonna be punished. They think being gay is like the worst way you can attack God. So you know that God's gonna attack Lydia back in the worst way possible. For research investigative journalism purposes, we told them that Lydia is now very sick with pneumonia. Basically by doing this, we're trying to see if they're all just talk, or if they actually believe what they're saying. So Lydia has pretty bad asthma. Her mom texted me this morning and said that she's like really, really sick. I think it's pneumonia. So I don't know anything about pneumonia. So I went on Google and I was just reading whatever Google told me to say. She was having a fever and chill, loss of appetite and shortness of breath. I drove her to the hospital. Do you think this is the father making things clear? I've wondered if something like this might happen. But women can still be saved. Don't take this wrong. There's consequences. So they're fully believing that Lydia is getting punished for having a gay thought. She's in a battle. Someone has to be that voice. Because Sophie's not being that voice. Now they're finally starting to draw some conclusions about Sophie. It's so funny. Sophie's just made up. It's actually mercy. I mean, there's gotta be something in her that stay pure, you know, stay the virgin. There's obviously something to work with. You'd have to somehow bring her back to that. 
So they want us to figure out how to bring Lydia back from not being gay. Or I guess she's not gay, she's having gay thoughts, but still, we need to figure out how to save Lydia. If it was me giving advice, I would probably say, well, take her to the hospital, uh, see whatever the doctor says. If there's medicine involved, give her the medicine. These guys had a different approach to save Lydia. I've seen people beat her without medicine, but it's just like, it's a serious ordeal, you know, without medicine. Yeah. But uh, I believe in her that she can do it without medicine. They think that medicine is a human interfering with God's plan, right? Because if God wants you to be sick, he's going to make you sick for a reason. And then humans are actually interrupting God's process. So they actually see medicine as evil for that reason. The doctors obviously are saying, like, just take all this medicine and you'll just magically be healed. It doesn't uh, necessarily always work with that, right? Yeah. I feel like the best is for him to stay here and pray. Don't give her medicine. Just continue praying. The best thing we can do is just love you. So like everyone in the count of three, we just say, we love you guys. One, two, three. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was the most awkward we love you Ben ever. I don't think they like us right now. Well, this was actually about 30 seconds after I broke the news to everybody that Lydia had a gay thought. So I think everyone was just feeling super uncomfortable at this moment. So I said this in a previous episode, but you can get away with anything in this cult if you just say Satan's behind it. Satan got a little in my head about him leaving. Yeah. <laughs> We're just pretty much just trying to escalate the situation. We're trying to see like how far they'll go. So to test this, I'm saying that Lydia's on her deathbed. She's gonna die very soon because of her no medicine. And I want to see if these guys actually believe everything they're saying. We got a call from Lydia's mom and she got like a lot worse, I guess. She's like not doing good at all. I think it's pneumonia. I know Daniel and Nathaniel kind of wanted me to stay here and pray about it. But I'm thinking if maybe I should go visit her at the hospital. Basically what she told me is she said, if I don't make it, I want to see you one more time before I die. If she dies and I didn't show up, she's just right around the road. I would feel so bad. But the dead buried the dead. To me it seems like you need to give her up. Like might be like some hard words. Yeah. Like the dead buried the dead. In God's eyes, Lydia is pretty much dead. Her spirit is a dead spirit because her spirit went against God. So if I go and visit Lydia, then I'm just as bad as she is. I'm dead. Are you among the dead? I don't want to be among the dead. Right. So basically he's saying, if I visit Lydia, I'm going to hell. If she's involved with almost sexual spirit. It's not like a minor league spirit. That's a major league spirit. I could just go there and then come right back. Obviously, like, these guys are brainwashed. I wonder if I can somehow, almost like in the movies where they're like, look at me, Danny. Like, I know you're in there somewhere, you know? I'm just trying to, like, get past that brainwashing, you know? And I'm trying as hard as I can. It would haunt me the rest of my life if I didn't go visit her. The whole reason for you to feel compelled to go is because she might die. I mean, I'm asked did say that. He said, that's the dead thing. We just think you're so precious. So precious. Ben, you're so precious, man. Your manipulation tactics aren't going to work on me. It's nighttime now. Like, I've been arguing with this guy all night. Like, obviously, I wasn't going to get past his brainwashing. I said every single thing I could, and nothing worked. I want to first. Like, hey, so you want to pray? I guess I'll go back to the tent and pray about it. Yeah. I go back to my tent to pray as I'm walking back. Like, I see that no one's looking, and I just bolt to the car, and I escape, dude. Let's go! Ben's calling me. Ben! Guess who's not in 12 tribes anymore? No way! That's why he's called Reckless Ben. You're freaking crazy, Ben. I mean, you guys stay tuned for episode four to find out what happened to Lydia. Make sure you subscribe to Reckless Ben because he's got a version of this as well. I mean, episode four. You thought this episode was crazy. Just wait till you see episode four, five, six, all the way to 15. We're going big. We're exposing these guys to the max. Yeah, make sure you're subscribed. Have your post notifications on so you don't miss an episode. And I uh, love you guys. I mean, I have so much anxiety from this cult, but um, see you guys on episode four. All right, peace. From the freaking spy glasses, like, look at this. It's cutting me. But we're dedicating this. Like, we're going, we're going, no one's doing what we're doing.